Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to look at knowledge framework in classification in Indian knowledge systems. So let's have a quick look at what we will cover today. We will begin with the Indian view of knowledge in general, then explore what's called the knowledge triangle. We will examine the three key components, Pramaya, Pramana and Samasya. Then we will look at the framework used to establish valid knowledge before wrapping up with some reflections on how these ancient ideas connect to modern thinking. So what exactly is knowledge according to Indian knowledge systems? The Sanskrit term of knowledge is Janna, which refers to awareness, understanding or realization. One important thing to note is that not all information counts as knowledge. In this tradition, knowledge must be valid, clear and free from doubt. Indian epistemology, that's the study of knowledge, focuses on three main questions. What can be known, that is called pramaya. How it can be known, called pramana. And what happens when we are uncertain, called samasya. The ultimate goal of this system is to reach what's called prama or valid knowledge through careful reasoning and observation. This approach is remarkably systematic and has parallels to modern scientific thinking. At the heart of Indian epistemology is what we can call the knowledge triangle. This consists of three elements that are present in any act of knowing. First, there is Pramatra, that's the knower or the subject who is seeking knowledge. Second, there is Pramana, the means or tools by which knowledge is acquired. And third, there is Pramaya, the object or concept that is to be known. These three elements form the core structure of any knowledge transaction. If this sounds familiar, it's because it's quite similar to modern epistemology's understanding of the relationship between subject, object and the tools we use to know things. Whether we are talking about scientific experiments or everyday observations, these three elements are always present. Let's look deeper at Pramaya, the objects or concepts that can be known. In the Nyaya system, which is one of the six major schools of Indian philosophy, Knowable entities are classified into 12 categories. These include Atman, the self, Sharira, the body, Indriyas, the senses, Artha, the sense objects, Buddhi, that is intellect, Manas, that is mind, Pravriti, that is activity, Dosha, that is defects, Pratyabhava, that is rebirth, Phala, that is results, and Duk sufferings and lastly, apavarg, liberation. What's particularly interesting about this approach is that objects are studied not just in their physical aspects, but also in terms of their metaphysical and ethical dimensions. This gives us a more holistic understanding of what we are studying. It's not just about what something is made of, but also what its purpose is and how it relates to human experience. Now let's turn to Praman, which refers to the reliable instruments or tools we use to acquire knowledge. Different philosophical schools recognize different numbers of Pramanas, but there are six main ones. First is Pratyaksha, or direct perception to our senses. Second is Anuman, which is inference or logical reasoning. Third is Upman, which means comparison or amalagi. Fourth is Shabda which refers to testimony from either trustworthy texts or experts. Fifth is Arthapati, or postulation. That's when we reason about something that must exist to explain what we observe. And six is Anuplabdi, which means non-perception, knowing something by noticing its absence. Each of these knowledge tools has specific conditions to ensure they are just used correctly and provide reliable knowledge. The systematic approach helps maintain credibility, coherence and proper application of different knowledge sources. 
Understanding doubt is actually a crucial part of knowledge across in Indian epistemology. The term of doubt is samasya which refers to uncertainty that arises when we have multiple conflicting possibilities. Doubt typically occurs under two conditions. When we have similar evidence pointing to two conflicting conclusions or when we lack conclusive proof through our demands or knowledge tools. What's really interesting is how doubt is viewed in this system. It's not seen as a failure or something negative, but rather as a necessary state in cognition. Doubt is what drives our need for inquiry or vikara. It pushes us to investigate further and ultimately leads to clarity and validation of true knowledge. This positive view of doubt as a catalyst for deeper inquiry is remarkably modern in its outlook. So how do we move from doubt to uncertainty? The nice school of a systematic process. It begins with samasya or doubt which motivates us to inquire. Next come prayojan which is identifying the purpose of our inquiry. Then we look for examples that help illustrate the concept. From there we look towards siddhanta which is a conclusion or theory. Finally, we use a five-part syllogism for inference to validate our conclusions. This approach places strong emphasis on logical rigor, structure, debate, and consistency in reasoning. If you notice this process mirrors the modern scientific method quite closely, we start with the hypothesis, make observations, apply reasoning, and arrive at a conclusion. This shows how sophisticated Indian epistemology was, even thousands of years ago. To summarize, Indian epistemology offers a deeply analytical approach to understanding how we know things. It explores cognition with remarkable logical precision and sophistication. Concepts like praman and samasya align quite well with modern research and inquiry frameworks. The knowledge triangle and classification system can enhance scientific thinking, AI modeling, and even ethical decision making. As we conclude, I encourage you to think about these ancient ideas might inform your modern practice. How might the concept of different knowledge tools help you approach a challenging engineering problem? How might the positive view of doubt as a catalyst for inquiry help you in your research? These ancient wisdom traditions have surprising relevance to our most cutting-edge fields today. And that's a wrap for this video. And if you found this helpful, of course, give it a like, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to help us grow. I will see you in the next video. Till then, happy learning.